Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and this is the first of three videos. So I'm going to take this headpiece uh, and make it um, decimated from uh, ZBrush um, so that we can retopologize it in another package. So first off, I'm just going to pre-process the thing um, down to 5%. What this is doing is just rebuilding this head um, in a format that could be exported out so that instead of it being you know nearly two polys uh, two million polys even um, it's going to be a lot lower than that uh, so under Z plugin click on decimate current knocked it down 52,000 but as I said in other videos um, what that actually is is a hundred odd thousand because you only get half the poly count um, so now what we're going to look at is a method of retopology. So this is going to be the first of three videos on how to do some retopology stuff. So I've got this character's head in here. Um, what I've done is I've locked it. I've turned the wireframe off and I'm just going to draw lines of topology over the top of the thing. So if you're using 3ds Max, you could use the similar sort of process of uh, freeform tools. And as we can see, I'm just extending lines, creating new lines. Um, if, for example, I didn't want this particular line, I could just control Z it or alt click on it, get rid of it. If I wanted to extend from the bottom of it, I can just press the shift key and keep on drawing. Um, and this is just a really cool way of being able to rebuild your meshes in a format that you're after. Now, because you're in a 3D package, it gives you access to all those kind of edit polygon tools. Um, so I've just converted that into a surface. Um, and because I'm working on another model, wherever I move one of these verts, unless I really pull it off the face, um, it will stick to the surface of the object. So it means that I can then select a number of these verts and just smooth them out, relax them, and they stick to the surface so that we can get a really good form going on. So because I've got that base to work from, I could potentially draw additional lines to create other new pieces, like so. Um, I think I've uh, I've inverted that, so um, I just need to hang on. Just bear with me. Um, yeah, I just need to select the face and flip the normals so that it faces the right way around, and then all I can do is bridge the thing together so that it becomes one piece, um, which means that you know you can rebuild your meshes exactly how you want them. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the entire process of how you could go about building a head. But as I keep saying, um, you know, you've got access to the 3D tools here. So, you know, if you didn't want these faces, you could delete them out and do whatever you wanted. You could, you know, extrude edges. Um, you could, um, you know, pull the points around as you need them. Potentially, you could bridge faces together. You could target weld them. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've got all that power of the 3D objects. Here's one I've kind of created earlier. It took about an hour and a half to build. I'm not going to kind of bore you with that whole process. Uh, I'll just get rid of that other mesh. Okay, so as you can see from this, um, it's not 100% kind of quadded, but it is... 2000 triangles it keeps the shape of the head quite effectively um, there are sections that need finishing off like the eyeballs and the uh, inside of the mouth but if we put a silhouette on this we can see it follows the shape quite effectively and gives us the form that we're after so um, the key thing to bear in mind is that you have loops that go around the mouth and around the eyes you know it, it's not essential that you have loops going everywhere um, you can have triangles at the back of the eyes and in the nostrils because those areas aren't going to move so 
um, get rid of polys where you need to, but keep the essential ones around the mouth and the eyes, and that should allow you to animate it. Okay, thanks for watching.